Bougainvillea, it makes any tropical garden spectacular and they're so easy to maintain that I find that they're becoming even more popular. But while, yes, they're easy to maintain, there are some things that you need to do periodically for them to continue looking spectacular. And in today's video, we are going to show you some of the routine care and maintenance, especially for potted bougainvilleas, to get them lasting and lasting. So, don't go anywhere. <music> Welcome back to the Calix Services Garden, and I'm Thelma. I have arrayed before me some of our, well, six of our bougainvilleas. What I'm going to do is take each individually, discuss what the issues are, and proceed to do some of the corrective actions. This lovely blush bougainvillea has been in this pot for, I would say, about four years. It is one of those glorious varieties that when it's in full bloom, Look at it, spectacular. One of the things I don't like about it though is it's not self-shedding. So after each blooming cycle, you, I have to come and remove the spent blooms. That's a bit of a downside. The problem in, the, in this blush is that it's lopsided. So this is something I'd want to correct. The potted mix seems to me predominantly soil. There is soil and compost, but at this point, I think the compost has all been uh, decomposed. So I think now is a good time to repot this blush using a, a mix that is high in organic matter. Bougainvilleas are very drought tolerant. They like a free draining soil. They don't like too much nitrogen or else you're gonna get a lot of leaves. So let me apply some not so gentle persuasion so that I can remove the plant from the pot and take a look at the root ball. The roots are indeed wrapped around at the bottom, but not as bad as I thought. But I'll still proceed with the repotting and the first step is to remove some of these old wrapped around roots. So the plant will go through a little period of stress, but it should recover pretty quickly as all the roots are nice and healthy. And we're not going to be removing much more than say 20% of the total root area. Okay, since we're doing six plants today, I'm going to do a fairly large batch of the potting mix. And what I'm using is a compost, coarsely shredded compost from our compost bin. Two parts compost, one part soil, mixed together. And in this mixture, I'm going to be using a pelleted organic fertilizer. The NPK ratio is 12% nitrogen, 6% phosphorus, and 12% potassium. I have applied sufficient so that it works out to about uh, two tablespoons per pot. And now I'm mixing all the components together to get a uniform potting mix. These containers, they do have holes in the bottom. I'm going to just put about a third of the mixture in the bottom, given the size of the root ball, because when I put it in, I want the root ball to be essentially flushed. But what I'm, why I'm showing you this as it is, I'm trying to correct the lopsidedness. So I'm going to give it a slight slant as I put it in the pot. And so the stem is standing more upright and see what happens as we go along. I'm firming the potting mix in place to make sure that it supports the stem in an upright position. And in there, it's all done. Hey, not looking too bad, is it? What I now have to do is to trim it so that it is more balanced in the pot.
And in pruning, you take the cut just before a node because you want to encourage the plant to go in a particular direction. So if there's a bud pointing down, don't bother with that. So here, I'm cutting that off. I'm encouraging that part to grow. So this part, although it's nice and healthy, it's not going to contribute to that bushy appearance you're looking for. So I'm going to have to take the take off as much of this section to balance with the other half of the plant. So after trimming, repotting, and watering, this is what the first bougainvillea looks like. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so it's now the turn of these two, but if you look at them, I mean, they have the same issues as the first one we did. The stem is leaned and lopsided. Similarly, leaned and lopsided. So I'm going to give them the same treatment and show that to you when I'm done. And here they are. They've both been repotted in a more upright position. They've been trimmed, watered, and given the fact that they have been only minimally um, stressed, they can go back out in a sunny location in a matter of a day or two. Now this bougainvillea really has a totally different set of problems right now. You can see the yellow leaves, definitely malnourished. Still giving you beautiful blooms, but yeah, it needs help. And if I tilt the pot a bit, you'll see that for one, it has, it's deficient in potting media. Half of it is gone. Most of the organic matter has been consumed out of this mix. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shake out the extra used material and I'm going to fill it up with our improved high organic matter mix. Now, that will improve the texture and the drainage, but we still have to give a little bit more attention to the nutrition of this plant, because from all indications, it is a heavy feeder, because all the bougainvilleas get the same treatment, but this one turned yellow. So I'm going to give it a little bit, another tablespoon of the organic fertilizer. So before I take it off the, <laughs> off the demonstration table, let me um, prune it, give it that nice balanced look. And this one isn't that bad. Just a few nips and here she is ready to go back in her original location in a day or two. Now, let's look at the last plant in the lot. Actually, it looks quite malnourished. The leaves are small, the stems are fine, and uh, overall, very unthrifty. And the only way to find out what's going on is to take a look at the roots. And oh dear. But this is really just dirt damp dirt. So this is a case of water logging. This is a totally inappropriate mixture for this bougainvillea. And the only way to correct this is to remove as much of the soil from the root zone, from the root ball, and to repot with the improved recommended uh, pot and mix, high in organic matter, two parts organic matter, one part uh, light soil. Try to minimize any further shock to the root ball as you very carefully put it into the pot and fill it up with the potting mix, firming in place as you go along. All right, so having given it a totally different potting mixture, there's minimal trimming, very minimal, just a tip to encourage it to send out more than one shoot at the tip. In terms of fertilizer, the new potting mix is expected to provide sufficient nutrients for the plants, but in order to give the plants a quick 
nutrient boost after the repotting. I applied some soluble NPK 20-20-20 at the rate of one tablespoon per gallon of water. I usually do that whenever I repot. Now, close observation in the next two weeks will let me know if there is need for another follow-up. I really don't expect that because the potting mix, as you saw, was quite rich in organic matter as well as organic fertilizer. So and here are the five bougainvilliers that we worked on. I took them into the nursery three days ago to observe whether or not there was any uh, shock, whether there is wilting or any leaf drop. Now this really malnourished one here has shown a little evidence, yes. So I will keep it in the nursery and clearly it needs a little bit more attention than the others. This type of maintenance activity would be required for bougainvilliers in pots on average every three years, providing you are consistent in the kind of weekly attention that bougainvillea needs in order to keep blooming and giving you the satisfaction that you expect from a lovely potted bougainvillea. We hope you found this video informative and that you liked it. If you did, then give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our informative videos. So until the next video, this is Thelma in the Calix Services Garden saying bye-bye.